We're talking F1, and it's Mexico this week. I'm Greg DePama. He's CJ Verdun of rotowire.com. And if you've been with us, and we've been talking about uh, F1 all season, well, actually, if you've been with us talking NASCAR and F1 all season, you're, you should be doing pretty well. Because we, we told you to take Joey Logano as a, as a pretty big 20-to-1 long shot a couple of months ago, and you'd be sitting pretty with him in the Final Four. And then we made a very, I mean, this is the first time I've ever made uh, a F1 handicapping, um, you know, pick, uh, whatever you want to call it, like for, forecast. Because not only did I do it on this show, I did it on the show I produce uh, where they have these Hall of Fame handicappers on Playbook Experts YouTube channel. Most of it is football, college, uh, NFL, college, to do some college basketball around March. Um but I said, look, I'm going to use my uh, a minute I have here to let everybody know that because it's a handicapping show that if you you want it's an investment, it's an investment. Sports investment is a sports investment that if you it, it, I'm going to give it to you. And I don't, I don't you know, this F1 and I don't know how many you viewers out there are interested in F1, but take Max for Stappen. And this was at minus 110, I think it was that I told them this was four weeks ago before the break take max for stappen because it would be really 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 difficult for him to lose and not win the championship and then last week wow last week his numbers came down even more which made it that much easier for you guys based on our you know look i didn't get this information myself i got it from cj and i just basically used you know my mouth and cj's brain uh (laughs) and here we are it's a good combo <laughs> after just one week <laughs> and he's now back up to minus what 450 let's see where is he where's our, our our max first staff and boy let me pop this in there 500 he's now minus 500 you're too late we told you we've been telling you for weeks we told you the odds were with them. The crazy odds went down to minus. What was it last week? One forty-five. It was minus one forty something. Yeah. Can you believe that? One thirty-five something somewhere around. And there. how many races are left? Mm-hmm. Uh, there five? are five races left, and we've got some sprint races in there. But we've been talking about it since before the break. So this has been over a month, where Verstappen had a fifty. He had a fifty-two point lead. I don't remember what it was. You know, six weeks ago, seven weeks ago. <laughs> Uh, but it was a 52 point lead before last weekend's race. And I, I think I said, like, I don't know if people can't do math or what is going on or or they really don't understand Formula One because all Verstappen has to do is keep doing exactly what he's been doing and he's going to win the championship. It's his to lose. And then he goes out this last week at the United States Grand Prix at the Austin track at Circuit of the Americas and he actually extends it to 57 points. He extended it a further five points. <laughs> <laughs> which is why uh, his odds have dropped to negative 500. I, I've been saying it for, for months. We've been saying it for months. You should have taken him long ago. Obviously it's too late now. Um, the it's, it's his to lose. And if you didn't, if you didn't listen to us two months ago, uh, probably been saying it even longer than that. Uh, you, sorry, but you missed out. Yeah. It, it just didn't look, if the roles had been reversed, I could have seen and understood it. Like if, if that was hard charging Max Verstappen, mm-hmm. I'd be like, all right, we can see him win six straight. I get it. But I mean, Lando Norris just started winning races this year. Exactly right. I mean, come on. And McLaren's so, been having problems too. And, and they, they have not been clean on their strategy. We talked in the NASCAR show about Paul Wolf and team Penske and how great they are at calling races. You have to be great at calling races in Formula One. It's all about strategy and tires, a lot about the car and a lot about the driver. Yeah, Uh, but you've got to make the right call at the right time. You've got to put the right drivers in the right positions. And McLaren has, they've torpedoed Norris's season multiple times. Uh, He's been in position to races and boneheaded moves with pitting him when they shouldn't have, um, leaving him out when they shouldn't have, uh, forcing him to stay behind Piastri, et cetera, et cetera put him in a position where he's now got to overcome 57 points in five races and two more sprints. And again, 
it's even easier for Max Verstappen now. He's got a little bit more elbow room to be able to to make a mistake. And as long as he continues finishing in the points, he's gonna be he's gonna be the champion. And he was on the podium last week, and Norris had a mistake himself. Um, you know, went off track and, and got a five second penalty. <clears throat> which dropped him behind Verstappen. Uh, so that was his opportunity to go on. But even if you look at Saturday and the sprint race, Verstappen won that. Uh, so Verstappen's still competitive. He's still in one of the best cars, if not one of the two best, maybe three best now we're talking about Ferrari. Uh, but Verstappen is up there as long as he doesn't, you know, completely throw it into the fence uh, multiple weeks, then then he's going to be fine championship-wise. It's going to be his. Yeah, I mean, uh, there might be some people that would probably be really now that that they didn't make the wager. They're going to be, you know, I guess their only hope is, is like is like you said, maybe Max, uh, something like really weird happens this week and Leonard Norris wins and Verstappen like wrecks or something and then the odds drop back down weirdly. Or maybe you have a chance there again. But yeah, it, it's been over. So uh, it's just not official yet. Okay. So what did you think about the race? Because that beginning of the race was uh, something else uh, because yeah, you had Verstappen and uh, Norris going, battling each other. And uh, what was it, Leclerc that uh, took advantage? Yep, yep. Uh, Ferrari, Charles Leclerc. So I kind of called them out as a wild card last week. It said that um, this was your last week that you could bring major upgrades to, to the track because these are all flyaway races, so they're not close to their homes. And you've only got five at the time, six races left to go. And that was their best chance to introduce upgrades. And Ferrari just nailed it. I, I said on the show that they were bringing uh, a big upgrade. Um, their upgrade paid off. They were fast throughout an entire race distance. Ferrari has consistently been fast for the past several seasons on a single lap, which is why they've been able to claim pole, you know, start on the front row, interrupt Verstappen and Norris's battles for those front row spots from time to time. But the Ferrari now, after last week, actually looks good over an entire race distance. And it all play comes down to these tracks, too. So Coda was a return to a natural terrain road course. Uh, Mexico is a natural terrain road course. It doesn't have the elevation changes like we saw at Coda, the, the hills and everything. <clears throat> but uh, it does have the same type of mix of medium and high speed corners. And it's really high above sea level as well. I want to say it's like two kilometers above sea level. So about uh, what 1.3 ish miles uh, above sea level. So the air is thinner. Uh, the engines make a little bit less horsepower because of that. Uh, the wings make a little bit less downforce because of that. The track looks a lot like Monza, um, but it races probably more like one of the more traditional, you know, natural terrain road courses, which is where uh, Red Bull really comes alive. So I would expect Verstappen to be competitive again in the mix for a podium. I would expect McLaren again to be in the mix for the win. Um, I don't think they've gone anywhere. I think they've just got to get their heads together. They're just not a championship caliber organization yet <clears throat> with this group. They've won championships in the past. Don't get me wrong, but they're coming from uh, from ways back to be able to get back to that uh, championship level again. And Ferrari just nailed it with Leclerc. Uh, Ferrari won two in the United States. Leclerc can be dangerous, and uh, he proved it at Coda. He's a great driver when he's got the right car, and it might look like Ferrari has actually given it to him. So I think the outlier in terms of these tracks for the next five or these last five races is really going to be Las Vegas. We've got Mexico this weekend that I would anticipate being pretty good for uh, McLaren and Red Bull. I think uh, Brazil will be the same. Las Vegas will be the one after that. That'll be a little bit more geared toward McLaren, I think, because it's a street course again, which we know the Red Bulls struggle at. And then you've got Qatar and Abu Dhabi to close out the season, which uh, Verstappen and Red Bull also are good at from a natural terrain road course standpoint. And I would expect Ferrari to be in the mix as well. Uh, but I still think McLaren and, um, and Red Bull have the advantage. So again, like we've been saying, you know, with the, now with an extended lead of 57 points over uh, Norris in the Drivers' Championship. I think Mer Verstappen's, you know, definitely the one. If you didn't get him, it's too late now. But he's definitely the one to go with, and I think it's his to lose. As you said, it's basically over, just not official yet. And as far as the uh, race this week, then you have a three-driver uh, battle here, odds-wise, with Norris, Leclerc, and Verstappen, all at the same number at plus two sixty-five. Uh, do you think there should be a clear number one? 
No, I think for the first time, the odds probably reflect what Formula One truly is delivering right now. So like I said, I think um, McLaren and Red Bull are still the favorites. Uh, Ferrari definitely took a step forward. As long as Red Bull and McLaren are fighting amongst themselves, I think Ferrari can sneak away for another couple, and that'll be Leclerc. So I think uh, this is right. However, when you look at, uh, so even favorites is right. I, I might put Norris up there probably at the top, though, because I think if, well, I don't know. Ferrari definitely had the legs on them in uh, at Coda, but I still think Norris, I, I think... Um, I think Norris, I'd probably put just a little bit of an edge on there. But, you know, even is probably a good call. But looking at uh, Mexico in particular, the last six races, five of them have been won by Max Verstappen and Red Bull. And, yeah, this isn't the same dominating Red Bull and Max Verstappen that we've seen in the past. But that just gives you evidence of exactly how well this car performs here and how well he knows this track. So, again, if you look at the championship and you look at the podium spots, Verstappen's definitely got the championship in hand. Uh, he should be very well in the mix for a podium finish as well, if not the win. And I think uh, both Ferrari and McLaren tend to shoot themselves in the foot. I'm just thinking I, giving, of giving Norris a little bit of the edge because to do it two weeks in a row in Formula One is tough to do. Nobody's really that bad, maybe, uh, in these top three teams. So maybe Norris and McLaren come back and they get the right strategy and they put the pieces together this week at Mexico. So I would say Norris, slight edge in the favorite. Uh, Leclerc is going to be up there for the podium. Verstappen is going to be up there for the podium. Uh, so honestly, I think those are your top three finishers right there. But you're going to go with Norris, number one. I'm going to go with Norris as my favorite, just as a very slight edge, despite the fact that uh, Max Verstappen has won five of the last six here at Mexico. Okay. And any long shots at all to consider here? Yeah, signs a little bit further back there in 850. He's got the, or 9-1, to one, he's got the uh, same car as Leclerc's, and, and he finished third. Uh, um, or I'm sorry, he finished up there, finished second, I'm sorry, last week. Uh, so good for him as well. Uh, George Russell, M Mercedes, they seem to have been left behind. Lewis Hamilton made a mistake. Uh, I think Mercedes just did not develop their car as quickly as and as well as Ferrari and McLaren have. So they've kind of lost a little bit of ground. But uh, of that bunch, probably Sainz and Russell, I would put as the two long shots. All right. And uh, I already popped in the um, team props. So you saw the odds there, McLaren and Ferrari and Red Bull. So That's interesting. So if you think Max Verstappen is going to win this week, I would take actually Red Bull in the team because uh, you're getting just maybe you know 0.15 better. Uh, yeah. 234 for that Verstappen is strange. 50 here, and McLaren and Ferrari are even for the win. So I think you get a little bit of a bump there, a little bit of a bonus. If you think Max Verstappen is going to win, I would – Put now, I would put my money on Red Bull yeah. uh, for stopping the win. Um, but I do think McLaren, Ferrari, and Red Bull are likely even favorites with, as I said, Norris and McLaren being a little bit ahead. Oh, where did I pop up that? Pop up the wrong one. All right, there you go. So that's F1 for this week. And then what's up next week? Are we back again? Next week, we are at Brazil. Is it? Let oh. me check to make sure it is the direct week after. Yes, it is the exactly one week later we'll be back. So next week, we'll be back talking about Brazil. And then we'll take uh, probably two weeks off yeah. before we Las Vegas. There you go. So we got Brazil. And then after that, NASCAR has their championship Saturday, Sunday all to themselves. And then uh, a couple of weeks uh, before Las Vegas. So for, uh, again, uh, we hope everybody's been able to take advantage of Verstappen to win the championship. Um, if you didn't, then hopefully you can figure out a way to, uh, I don't know, chip away, make some money here in these races, even though it's very tough. Whenever you got three drivers that are co-favorites, it's always the worst. Um, because now you've just got like a 33% chance and it's really hard that way. Not to say, look, it's F1, um, and it's a lot better chance than a NASCAR, that's for sure. You know, if you got three drivers at those numbers in NASCAR, then I always just say, well, forget it. I'll just, you, you take all those three, and I'll go after some long shots this week. But you can't do that in F1. You got to decide which one of those three you want, more than likely. So it's a little bit difficult, but hey, CJ says Lando Norris. We'll see if uh, he comes through. We'll see you again next week when we talk about Brazil. 
And uh, we'll see how things go. We'll see if the championship numbers uh, keep getting higher or if something happens to Max this week and maybe the odds drop again, giving everybody a second chance at Max Verstappen to win the championship in 2024. So don't forget to check out the video. Well, this video, don't forget to check out the description. You got a link for CJ's F1 report, fantasy report over there at rotowire.com. And if you're into NASCAR, you can check out the video. We already did one. You could check that out from a few days ago. It's already been posted uh, here on the channel. Uh, and then you can check back on Saturday when we do a post-qualifying and practice report for NASCAR as well. For F1 followers, we'll see you guys again next week.